In this video, I want to show you guys how to create a greatest common divisor function with recursion. Now, this tutorial is going to consist of two parts. The first part is going to be the coding section, and the second part is going to be the Blackboard section. The Blackboard section is going to be a deep dive into all the recursive processes that happen in that function. And before we even get into any of that, I want to preface this video by showing you by hand what this function is going to do without all the recursion involved to help cl like clear up the water a little bit because I know uh, recursion can be quite uh, a hard thing to wrap your mind around so basically let's get into it um, the GCD or the greatest common divisor is the largest positive integer that divides each of the integers so in this case 6 would be the greatest common divisor of 12 and 54 because 6 is the largest positive integer that divides evenly into 12 and 54 and the way we're going to solve this is with Euclid's algorithm. And it's an efficient method for computing the GCD of two integers. And basically what it states is, if we subtract the smaller number from the larger number, the GCD doesn't change. So if we keep subtracting repeatedly, we end up with the GCD once one of the numbers reaches zero. So instead of subtraction, we're going to use modular arithmetic. So we're going to take the largest number, which is 54, modulus the smaller number and for those of you that don't know what mod the modulus operator does it just returns the remainder so 12 goes into 54 four times because 12 times 4 is 48 but there's six left over so what this is going to return is the remainder or six now 54 is six and 12 is unchanged so now we have six and 12 we take the largest number of six and 12 which is 12 and do modulus 6. Now 6 goes into 12 2 times. 6 times 2 is 12. There's nothing remaining. So that's equal to 0. Now 12 is equal to 0 and 6 is unchanged. We have reached 0. That means that the GCD is 6. And essentially that's what this function is going to do, although it's going to do it recursively. And we'll get into that section next. In the coding section of this tutorial, we're going to start out by creating our function. So we're going to say define GCD. This GCD function is going to take in two input values, A and B. A and B is going to be the two integers that we find the GCD of. Um, now there's going to be two parts to this function, the base case and the recursive function call. The base case is going to terminate the recursive function calls because without a base case, uh, recursive function calls would call themselves forever and ever and would never stop. So the, the base case is going to be when b equals 0 because when b equals 0 that means a is our GCD so we're going to say if b is equal to 0 that means we need to return a and then from here if we b is not 0 that means we need to do some more recursive function calls so else we're just going to say return GCD B and a modulus B okay now we're switching these two variables a and B and we switch a and B because we don't know which number is the largest if we reach two numbers say 6 and 8 and we say 6 modulus 8 the two numbers would remain unchanged because 8 goes into 6 zero times with 6 remaining so 6 won't change the recursive function call will just swap those two numbers. So the next time it gets to this part, it will say 8 modulus 6, and it will work then. So let's print GCD, and we'll just do 12 and 54 because we know uh, what the GCD of those two numbers are. So we'll run it, and we'll go and check. Yeah, and the GCD is 6. So in the next part, we're going to dissect all this code on the chalkboard. So this function all starts out right here with the function called GCD and 12 of 54. It's going to pass 12 and 54 to A and B. So for the first function call, A is going to be equal to 12 and B is going to be equal to 54. Okay. So from here it checks. Is B equal to 0? Well, B is 54. It's a long ways from 0, so it's not. So it goes to this else condition and it returns GCD of B and A modulus B. A modulus B is 12 modulus 54 and remember we talked about how when the smaller number is being modulated by the 54 they remain unchanged 
So what's going to happen is this is going to be GCD of B, which is 54, and A modulus B, which is 12 modulus 54, which is just 12. So this is the first function call, and it passes 54 and 12 to A and B. So now A is 54, 54, and B is equal to 12. And as you can see, A and B have switched. They're not changed. They've just switched places. Now it checks, is B equal to uh, 0? It's 12. It's closer, but it's still uh, quite a ways. So it goes to this else condition, and it returns GCD, B, and A modulus 6. So this is GCD. This is the fu this is the recursive function call. So B is 12 and A modulus B 54 modulus 12 is 6 because 12 goes into 54 four times, which is 48, but there's 6 remaining. So this is 6. So now 12 is our A and um, 6 is our B. This is our function our second re cursive call and it passes uh, 12 and 6 up here so now a is equal to 12 and b is equal to 6 okay it checks is b equal to 0 well it's not so it goes to this else condition again and it returns GCD so GCD b is equal to 6 and a modulus b 12 modulus 6 is actually equal to 0 because 6 times um, 2 is 12, but there's no remainder, so 6 comma 0. This is our third recursive call. A is equal to 6, and B is equal to 0. Yeah, okay. And it checks. Is B equal to 0? Well, look, it's, it is. it is. So what we do is return A, which is 6. We return this back to our function down here and if those of you that don't know uh, let me digress for a second this is called a call stack this is what happens when you have recursive function calls they stack on top of each other just like a, a stack of plates or a stack of books and once we hit the base case it no longer is working its way upwards but it starts working its way downwards and every time we hit a return statement it returns it to the previous function down here and it removes this part or this top function call off the top of our call stack and it works all the way down until it reaches our first rec function call again so this third recursive call returns six back to our second recursive call and it returned it to this GCD part right here right here so now this is six and is actually now returning 6 so this part is 6 It is now returning 6 down to this part of the function so we're now removing the second recursive call off the top of our call stack so we've returned 6 down here and if we look this is our GCD part so this is what this part returned so this is again 6 and it returns it down to our first function call down here so this is now 6, and our first recursive call is removed off of our call stack. And now 6 is right here, so it returns 6 to this right here again, and it returns it to our print statement because we're in our first function call. So now it's print 6 instead of print GCD 12, 54, and it prints 6 to the screen. And that's essentially how all this recursion works. Um, I hope that you learned something and that you understood all this. Um, if you did, I would appreciate it if you liked, commented, and subscribed, and I will see you guys in future tutorials.